I'm not normally a fan of negativity, but sometimes it's necessary to talk about. Today, we're going over electron configuration. So this can be a bit of a lively topic. So I'm going to break it down and go through it nice and slowly and concisely so you get everything you need to know for your A-level chemistry exam. Okay, let's dive in. Electronic structure. The placement of electrons and atoms is complex and there are several levels of organization. We're going to start with electron shells and as per the Bohr model, which if you need to remind yourself on, it's covered in the fundamental particles episode of this revision series, so check it out. Um, so as per that model, electrons are arranged in shells and the shells are defined by the principal quantum number given as the symbol N. The lowest energy cell has N equals one. Outer shells have a higher energy and a higher N. The higher the N of electron, the further from the nucleus it is. Okay, so three N would be further from the nucleus than one N. Right, so we need, then need to get another layer of organization. We have some sub shells. So for atoms that have more than one electron, shells are split into sub shells that have slightly different energies. The difference in energy between sub shells is much less than the difference in energy between shells. A shell with a given n will have n subshells. So for example, the n equals three electron shell has three subshells, okay? Now we're getting even more granular, we're talking about orbitals. Subshells are composed of orbitals, and orbitals in the same subshell have the same energy, and each orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. Okay, let's bring that all together. So electrons, they chill and hang out in orbitals, and an orbital can, hang, can hold a maximum of two electrons. A set of orbitals of the same energy is called a subshell. Subshells make up different shells of electrons, and different subshells do not have the same energy. Okay, so electrons are made of subshells, subshells are made of orbitals, and an orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. Okay, not too bad, is it? So let's turn the focus on orbitals. Orbitals are labelled by letters, and the first three orbitals are called S, P, and D. An S subshell is made of one S orbital. A P subshell is made of three P orbitals, and a D subshell is made of five D orbitals. Orbitals of exactly the same energy are called degenerate. Okay, that's a very key word to remember for this topic, degenerate. So, let's go through the shells. The N equals one shell has one subshell, and it's an S subshell. The N equals two shell has two subshells, an S subshell and a P subshell. And the N equals three shell has three subshells, an S subshell, a P subshell, and a D subshell. Oh, if I say subshell again, I might like pass out. It's such a tongue teaser. Okay, so three types of orbitals, S orbital, P orbital, D orbital. Now, do we remember that really cute keyword from earlier that describes orbitals of exactly the same energy? So they're said to be degenerate. Okay, so now we've covered orbitals, we need to have a quick chat about electron configuration. And electron configuration is composed of three parts. That principal quantum number, so the N, the subshell, and the electron oc occupancy of that subshell. This is repeated for every subshell that is populated, and shells are populated from the lowest energy to the highest energy. So let's go through the electron configuration of carbon. So the first thing we do is we look at the periodic table. So the atomic number of carbon is six, so it's got six protons. Atoms are neutral, so there's going to be six electrons too. Now, we fill the subshell with the lowest energy. That's going to be the 1s orbital. It has the lowest energy and holds two electrons. Then we fill the subshell with the next lowest energy, which is the 2s orbital, and that can also hold two electrons. Then we add electrons to the subshell with the next lowest energy, and there are two remaining electrons to be accommodated in the p subshell. So we can write out that accommodate that configuration as 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Okay? So if an atom were to hold 16 electrons, how would they be arranged in the subshell? It would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p4. Okay? So that is how we do electron configurations. And remember, the layers of organization is electrons, orbitals, subshells, electron shells, okay? So let's have a go at doing it for beryllium. If I tell you that beryllium has a mass number of nine and an atomic number of four, what is its electron configuration? 
Now remember, for electron configuration, we don't give a crap about the mass number. We care about the atomic number, tells us the amount of protons, which is four, atoms are neutral, so it's four electrons. So that configuration is 1s2, 2s2. That's 1s2, 2s2. Okay, that brings us to the end of this revision episode. I hope it was useful. Make, have a go at writing out some electron configurations yourself. Google them to make sure they're right. Re-listen to this episode um, to get up to speed. Hope this was useful and good luck with your revision. I'll catch you on the next one.